right, guys, check it out. So today we're going to do a push-up and a pull-up routine to increase the muscular endurance and strength qualities of both sides of the body. So when you're talking about a push and a pull, we want to make sure that we're working both muscles accordingly. We're working the antagonistic muscle of the press variation. And again, we're also working on the muscles of the back, which is going to set up the body and balance out the body appropriately. The goals for this particular routine is going to be increasing capillary density of the fast and slow twitch fibers. We're also gonna be improving on that technical efficiency of each movement, whether it be a push up or a pull up, we have to make sure that we're gaining that technical side so that we have the most efficient way to elicit the best response possible. With that, we're also gonna improve on muscle hypertrophy and we're gonna increase hormonal responses like growth hormone and testosterone because we are activating muscles and increasing that strength. Again, our focus points are gonna be working on full range of motion that is conducive to the individual joint prerequisites. You need to make sure that you have the proper mobility and you need to work in those ranges of your own mobility. You also wanna work on that steady tempo in all those reps. So we're not gonna be ballistic, we're not gonna rush the reps, we're not gonna to try to produce maximal power with this. We're actually gonna stay in a solid tempo so that we can get all of these things hit on when we're talking about our goals. All right, so again, we wanna make sure we're maximizing our goals there by working on these tempos. The main thing that we also wanna look at is making sure that you have that tension built up. So we're gonna get full range of motion and we're gonna work through those particular ranges to enhance the qualities of a push-up and of a pull-up. All right, so check it out. So how we're going to work on the push-up, you need to make sure that your body is hollowed out I like to emphasize squeezing the glutes and tensioning up the body when we're talking about the trunk and the glutes so that it can stabilize the core region. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get down on our hands. What I wanna see is your hands being placed right underneath your shoulders, all right? So that's gonna be a neutral position here. From there, I'm gonna take my feet, I'm gonna bring them together and squeeze my inner thighs. I'm locking down my glutes here, squeezing my glutes, and then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate and try to crush my armpits, activating my lats. As I come down, right, I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna breathe in as I come down, touching my chest, blowing out as I come up. I'm keeping my glutes on, my abs on, making sure that I'm keeping my spine neutral. My head is the same way. As I come down, Good. Again, you wanna make sure that you're not dumping your shoulders forward. Some of it may look like this. As I'm coming down, my elbows shoot too far in and my shoulders dump forward, all right? That's gonna put a lot of shearing stress up on the upper cavity, on the upper thoracic, up on the uh, shoulder itself. We don't want that, okay? Another thing we don't wanna do is we don't want to go too wide and flare out the elbows too much. So we're gonna be here, and I don't wanna see this. You put a lot of stress on the, on the wrist, and again, you're putting a lot of stress up on the upper thoracic, and again, into the shoulder, okay? So again, stay in that position. You should look like an arrow. If I'm looking down at myself, my elbows and my back should look like an arrow as I come down and up. Now we're gonna go into the pull-up. Now with the pull-up, we're gonna take the same hand position. We're gonna go shoulder width apart. Notice what I mean by pull-up. We're not talking about a chin-up where you're supinated. Our hands are gonna be out in a pronated position. The goal here is to make sure that the scapula is gliding appropriately and we're not dumping the shoulders forward again, just like I talked about on the push-up. So you're going to go to a range that is appropriate again for your own mobility. So I wanna come all the way down I wanna make sure I'm still maintaining tension there. I'm not totally losing everything. I'm gonna keep my abs tight and I'm gonna squeeze my glutes. As I come up, I'm gonna to go to a full contraction and I'm also gonna to get to that end range without having to compensate and try to pull my shoulders forward to get up more on the bar. So again, you have to find that range. It goes back to having the appropriate uh, range of motion based upon your joint prerequisites like I talked about. So if you don't have that shoulder mobility, one, you need to work it, and I'll show you how we get into that in a minute, and two, you need to work in the ranges that are appropriate for you. So we're gonna take the bar, shoulder width, we get a good grip on it. From here, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, and then I'm gonna drive up, 
back down. Now notice, if I go too far and try to get my chin over the bar, I'm gonna round at the shoulder. So this is what we don't want. Here, you try to come up, and then I round forward. Again, it's gonna put a lot of stress on the shoulder, and ultimately you're gonna have some issues down the line. So again, like I said, work on the range of motion, work on your mobility, and then work into the ranges that are appropriate for you. Now, and another thing, when you go to set up on the bar, you don't wanna pull your elbows forward. So again, a lot of times I see, a lot of my fighters will do this, and I'll have to uh, regress them down, but they'll come here and they'll turn their elbows in, all right, facing away from their body. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and kick them out to the side so that you are in that externally rotated uh, position with the shoulder, as opposed to turning them in here and then putting a lot of stress here on the anterior delt. So as I do that, watch how it looks. So I'm gonna pull and then automatically, I'm gonna round forward no matter what. So you're not really hitting what you wanna hit when it comes down to a pull up and you're using a lot of bicep. So we wanna make sure that we're staying away from that. Make sure you're in that externally rotated state. You're working on the lats, you're working on the rhomboids, you're working on the traps and we're squeezing everything back there, the rear delts. All those, mus all those muscles that are across the T-spine is where we wanna look at, across that scapular region. So we wanna work those entirely through this full range of motion until you're own range of motion and uh, we'll go from there. Now let's get into the workout. So let me go ahead and go over the workout before we get after it. Now, you're gonna perform both push-up and pull-up in a superset fashion. You're going to do 10 total push-ups and then you're gonna hop on the bar and do five total pull-ups. You're going to rest 60 to 90 seconds after each superset. Now, studies have shown that you can do a push-up to a pull-up at least two to three times as much. So if you're looking at it like this, you should be able to do 10 push-ups to every five pull-ups. You should be able to either do 15 uh, push-ups to every five pull-ups, so two to three times as much, again. Now, again, if you're looking at it from a higher range, you should be able to do 20 push-ups to 10 pull-ups, so on and so forth. So again, we wanna look at it from that perspective. Let's make sure we are doing at least that amount. Again, I would also preface this, that you want to work on multiple pulling uh, movements that are going to balance out the body. So again, if you can't get as many pull-ups as you can with push-ups, make sure you can substitute that with some sort of row variation or anything like that. Now I go over more detail in my mentorship course. You can check it out in the link in the description there where I go over how to balance out the body more appropriately. But for this, we're gonna go ahead and start off with five sets. Now we're going to increase the sets each and every week so you'll get a progressive loading pattern and we're gonna increase the work capacity from there. When you're talking about doing this, I would say, if you don't have a gym to go to, this is very good. You can do this probably two, maybe even three times per week. If you're gonna throw this into your training session, I would probably leave it to afterwards, after you're done with your main lifts and some accessory lifts, I would throw this in right after that. So again, I have this type of protocol in my body armor program. So if you guys wanna check that out, it's an eight week program that goes over the progressions accordingly for eight weeks total with no gym equipment needed. So check it out in the link in the description. Now let's get into the mobility and the warm up there so that we can do what we plan to do in this workout. Let's get it. So again, when you're taking your rest, you can go ahead and shake your arms out and make sure that you're doing something productive. So again, I like to shadow box, especially for the fighters out there. If you're looking to do this, if you're looking to do this to one, have the accessories worked in to your training session or two, you don't have access to the weight room, you can do this and still work technically even when you're slightly fatigued. So it's really good from a conditioning standpoint.
that's a wrap. Again, try this out. You can do it either after your training session if you have a weight room handy, or you can do it two to three times per week if you don't have access to a gym in these crazy times. Also, if you don't have access to a gym, make sure you check out Body Armor. It's my eight week only body weight program that I have out there. You don't need access to a gym. You're probably only gonna need a pull-up bar and some bands to help you do some of those rowing and pulling motions. Like I said before, you definitely wanna make sure that you're doing more pulls than you are with your presses. So again, like I said, you can only do so much with your pull-ups. So you have to offset that with some other back pulling uh, exercise. So whether it be a row or something of that nature, but again, you wanna balance out the body. You wanna do one to two work to rest ratio from a pull or from a push to a pull. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Again, if you like this video, man, show me some damn love, hit the like button. Make sure you share it. Make sure people know I'm trying to grow this channel. If you guys want to see me do more videos, I got to see more views. I got to see more likes. So let me know by doing that. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so, if you're new to the channel. And if you haven't done so, make sure you hit the notification so you know when my videos come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right? Preferably in the morning on the East Coast. And again, I'll see you again next time. Hold on one second. Peace. It's mixed with all the beat. Hey, what it do? Check out Daru Strong Podcast number 28 this week. I'm going to be lacing your ass with some truth. Pretty out. Let's get it.